All right, everybody. Good to see everyone. Still got some people trickling in. We're going to sing a couple songs, get our hearts engaged in the worship here, all right? this one, but if you know John 8, 31, you'll catch on really quickly. Here we go. Lord, and I'm fighting back the devil with the word. 
church. How's everyone doing? Amen. It's so good to be together, and I want to welcome all of you to our Desert Cities Church of Christ service. Uh, welcome. And today's service has been a much-anticipated service. If you're joining and visiting us with us today, you've joined us for a very, very special occasion. Every year, the Desert Cities Church gives and offers up a special offering uh, to the world mission, specifically our churches in the Middle East, and even here locally. And, you know, it's been so inspiring to see just even this year people giving and, and sacrificing, uh, saving, putting on uh, garage sales. A few brothers did a triathlon this year, and a few brothers even did a Spartan race yeah. yesterday as well. Yeah. There's proof right there. You can even tell by Jake Rock's um, mild sunburn right there. But you may be thinking, wow, that's radical or, or, or that's even crazy. Well, one, yes, we are radical for God's mission, amen? amen? And there are a few of us that are a little crazy, but it's all good. It's all for God's mission. But here's the thing. We take it to heart what Jesus says in Matthew 28 in his great commission, and we fully believe that Jesus has been given all authority on heaven and on earth, and he's commissioned us to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and to teach them everything he has commanded. And we surely know that God's going to be with us to the very end of the age. Amen? Amen. And so before I pray for our service here, uh, I have a, a few directions for us. So once you came in, you were probably given one of these uh, cards right here. And so go ahead and take some time to fill it out. Uh, you can fill out um, or, or basically write whatever um, encouraging thoughts or prayers that you have for our brothers and sisters in the Middle East. And so we will be able to give this once we give our offering as well. And so if you are going to give online, all you have to do is just turn this in when you, we, we give up our offering. So let's pray. Father in heaven, great God, we come before you extremely thankful and grateful for how you love us, how you extend your grace, God, how you move and work in our lives. God, I really pray that you be with our service today. I'm so inspired just all, uh, by all my brothers and sisters just really giving sacrificially. 
how they've gone throughout the year considering our brothers and sisters in the Middle East and just around the world, God, the mission. And I really put, I pray that you put that on our hearts to do our part. God, I really pray, God, that uh, so many people will be moved and impacted by our giving today. That souls are going to be saved and people are going to know Jesus Christ. Thank you for all you do, God. I want to lift up a few names here. I want to pray for Gabriel Bermudez, Angie Larson's nephew, God, that has pancreatitis. God, I really pray that you heal him, or that you use this time to even draw him closer to you. I pray for Juan Carver and his family, or his mom's passing. Please be with them through this difficult time, God. Help them to be comforted by you. I also pray for Wanda Set, God, and her health. That used to be a, a, a member here, God, of our church. I pray you be with her health and put your healing hand on her. God, we love you. Thank you for working in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to sing a couple songs to prepare our hearts for communion. Just help us think about Jesus and the cross, but also just how powerfully God works through us.
think about giving our offering here a little bit later, one of the things I love about the song Do It Again is it's all about faith and trusting in what God has done before and what God will do again. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet I'm Waiting for change to come Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness This is my confidence, you've never failed me yet. I know the night won't last, your world will come to My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. And my heart will sing your praise again.
promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my church <laughs> yeah you heard that right okay <laughs> all right well it's been really nice uh we started uh, a series on grace grace is obviously very really appropriate to uh, communion here and uh yeah you can't talk enough about grace right um yeah you know what it's so crucial uh to appreciate grace as a christian uh without it i wouldn't be a christian right so that's really really a, a big deal <laughs> so um I heard someone say this once, and uh, it stuck by my, it stays in my head all the time when I when I hear grace, and how even though grace is it's a free gift, it's not cheap. You know, it, it costs something. It costs Jesus' life, so I could live. He had to die, and uh, there's, I mean, it's, it sounds it's as simple as it is. It's obviously more deeper than that, but uh, yeah, it's just a very strong strong word. I think um, I, I've heard this song uh, recently. It's a Christian song. It's called "I'm Listening." And the words really, uh, uh, yeah, I connected it to the cross recently as I was, as I was preparing for this. It talks about uh, when you speak, confusion uh, fades. Just a word and suddenly I'm not afraid. There's a hope in every, every word you speak. And it goes on about every word is life. And at the end it talks about mostly about being quiet and quiet my heart so I can listen to you. And it's so important because before as a Christian, I wasn't listening I've heard God's word preached or somewhere, or maybe a verse here and there, but I never was listening to God's word before. And, um, yeah, it, it's just a, it's, it's very, it's a very deep thing here because I'm, I was very confused before as Christian. I was like, the song says the opposite, but I didn't know what, what was my purpose. I didn't have a purpose. I was very afraid. Um, I just wasn't a good listener. I mean, I'm still working on that too, still. But <laughs> so that's still that's the hardest one, I think. But anyways, but the the thing is, like, the biggest thing I didn't have a purpose. And once I became a Christian, all of a sudden I had hope. I had a purpose. I knew why I was made. I, I knew the purpose. What what am I supposed to be doing here? I don't have to be afraid because I got something to look forward to. All the answers are in God's word. It's all foretold, and I I know where I could go as long as I continue to walk with God and follow him. And nothing about what I do, but here we go, by, by grace alone. You know, faith and trust in Jesus, of course. But, um, yeah, nothing, because I can never, I, I was never, never ever, ever going to be able to earn anything on my own until I, I started learning more about grace, by God's, uh, by God's grace. <laughs> Anyways, um, so, uh, and then I also learned another thing that when I became a Christian, it was an instant. It was a, it's a process, obviously. It's not, it's not destination. Oh, I'm a Christian. Everything's great now. I'm going to cease to sin. I'm going to cease to whatever, you know. Like I said, I'm still working on listening and amongst other things. And it's just an ongoing process. And, uh, and uh, I love that um, the more and more I walk with God, the more and more I'm around you guys, uh, the more growth. And uh, it, it's just a, it's a beautiful thing, the, just uh, the fact that I have a relationship with God and all y'all. <laughs> so it, it's just it's just an ongoing thing, and I really, really appreciate that. So I'm looking forward to more and more, learning more about grace. And uh, like I said earlier, it, it just it gives me hope. I want to read, uh, if you guys could turn to Galatians 2.20. Uh, here in Paul, the Apostle Paul is speaking here. And I really love that he makes it personal in, in these scriptures here. Verse 20 here in Galatians. 
I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. Once again, he used the word me twice right there. And I love the fact that he personalizes it. And I thought about that. And you know what? If everybody here was saved already, and I was the last one on the list to be saved, he would do it all over again just for me. And I love the fact that it's very personal. And Paul understood that. And, and I, I'm learning more and more that, like I said, he didn't just, just die for the world. He did, but it was also for me. And I love that. Let's pray. Father in heaven, uh, thank you so much for today, Father. Thank you for giving us another day, a day to uh, know more, to know you on more on a personal level, a deeper level, uh, opportunity to just glorify you, to share about you, to love you, to love one another. Thank you so much for everything I have, including my family, spiritual and physical. Uh, by your grace alone, we, we have everything we need, Father. And uh, I don't want to nullify your grace by anything I, I'm trying to do, but you do it all, Father. You did it all already. I just want to uh, love you, sit at your feet, listen to you, and uh, do your will, Father, please, through every single one of us, and uh, let us glorify your holy name in everything we do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I forgot one thing, the most important part. I also ask you to bless the, this uh, communion, the juice in the, represents the blood, and the bread represent, represents your body. And you blessed it, and uh, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. I've called you children, I've called you son, what is there to answer if I'm the only one? Morning comes in paradise, and morning comes in life, still I must obey, still I must invite, if there's anything to say. If there's anything to do, if there's any other way, I'll do anything for you. I was dressed in embarrassment and I was dressed in wine. If you had a part of me, Will you take your time? Even if I come back or even if I die, is there some idea to replace my life? Like a father to impress, like a mother's morning dress. If you ever make a mess, I'll do anything for you.
have a five minute fellowship break so go ahead and meet your neighbors and those around you and then we're going to call, be, be called back in with a song in just a few minutes
Can I get the worship team to come on backstage? If you start wrapping up your conversations, we'll start singing here in just a moment. Make your way back to your seats. And we're going to continue with our worship. Together. Come on, church. Come it up. There is much to do. There's work on every hand. Heart to cry for help comes ringing through the land. Jesus calls the reapers. I must have to be ready at the beginning. Come on. Here am I standing. Here am I, Lord. Here am I standing. Here am I, Lord. Here am I standing. Here am I, Lord. Here am I standing. Here Who cry out for bread with the bread of life there, longing to be fed? Shall they start a famish while the feast is sweet? I must be more faithful. There it is. Here am I standing. Welcome up, Scott. Hey, man, everyone. Well, it's great to be together today, and uh, we are happy to be able to come and give. This is one of, uh, one of my favorite Sundays. We get together, and everyone comes to, to give every week, but today we come to give in a special way. Yeah. 
And uh, I know we, we, some of our folks are off in San Diego with a couple graduates there. Amory Samaripa is graduating today, as well as Alexia Boyer. So uh, you can send out your uh, congratulations to them. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, hearing about that. But uh, today, we've been, ha- we've been going through a series on grace, as you've heard already with Aaron. And this morning was pretty cool as I went out for a walk. Here we go. I saw this rainbow as I was, I just started praying about the church and about today and really about the future, and this rainbow came up. Beautiful. You ever had that happen where you just feel like God is just like, Answering your prayer, only your prayer, right? No one else was praying for that. And then like five minutes later, it was gone. So it was just like, it was, I was praying, looked up, it was there, it was gone. I don't usually get all excited about stuff like that, but today I did. It was just cool. God uh, encouraging us and just smiling down on us. And then I was going through, you ever have those stacks of mail on the side in your, on your dresser? Maybe you're not like me. <laughs> You have like the important mail, the open right away, and then you have the other mail that just kind of goes. Okay, this was in the other mail category, and I opened it up, and it was one of those class action suits, you know, that you get that Walmart, you know, 12 years ago had some thing on the tent that you bought, and they're giving you the refund, and, you know, so this was very particular number, $9.41. That was pretty exciting. But it was one of those little moments where I just go, wow, God, that was pretty cool. I had in my number, I didn't even share it with my family, kind of what we were hoping to give today. And that $9.41 put me $2 over what I wanted to give. It was kind of a little thing. But I hope that in your week and, and in your you know, building up to this, that you've had some of those God moments. That it's not even about, I was probably more excited about the $9 than I was about everything else. Because it was was special to me. Uh, I don't know if I'd call that overflowing, but that was enough. And uh, today I saw this with the guys. We got together and we were talking about having our quiet times and how easy it is with social media and everything today to have a special time with God. I mean, you can just type in anything you want, and you can get a sermon on it. And yet sometimes we still struggle to do that, right? I mean, it's just like, well, it's so easy. You could type it in on the way to work and listen to it. And I saw this one. It was called, I Like Giving. Maybe you like giving. Maybe you don't like giving. But to be able to just go through the Bible and look at what does it mean to have a life that likes to give. It's fun to be around people that give, people that are encouraging, people that are great to be around. And I, it was cool to see Christian up here because on Wednesday we got as the guys together, like I told you, and we all talked about our gifts. And we had 14 different gifts, and everybody had to choose one and think about how can you use that gift to build up your family, your small group, the church, and the world. And so we all got together, and Christian was in my group, along with uh, Josh and uh, Richard and a few of the other guys, and it was kind of the, mine was wisdom. I don't know if it's because I have wisdom or I just would like to have wisdom someday, (laughs) but that was was kind of my word. Uh, Christian's was knowledge, and and I was just, what, what was that? And he said, man, I just love the Bible. I love the word. I love it. And just to see him up here today, and we were just talking about how to encourage the church and to have him be able to share that was a special thing. Sometimes we don't even realize when people are doing the thing that God created them to do. Right. And yet, I'm sure it wasn't lost on Christian that we had that discussion, and here he was. You know, today, God has given us the ability to change lives, to change the world, and it's all through his grace. Last week, we talked about Jesus and his relationship with his mom and how God showed him grace there. Today, it's called the grace of giving. The grace of giving. Not just giving today, but a lifetime of giving. You know, not just that you can have a one-time event and that covers you, 
but to be like Jesus where he gave from the moment he came onto this earth to the moment he left. He put God first. And another thing I want to say on the side, if you're like me, you're thinking about missions right now and, okay, what are we going to say as we get closer to missions? Is it going to have me empty out my wallet? You know, could I do more? And if you're anything like me, I always think, you know, I could always do more. You know, I could always give another $5, another $20, another $100, another $1,000. You know, that's not what we're here to do today. Amen. So we, I just put the guilt aside. If you're thinking, oh, I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have done that. And we're, we're not going to go there. Okay, it's over. You know, you guys, many of you have been planning all year long, saving, selling uh, garage sale stuff, you know, running races, killing yourselves out there. Why would anybody do that for seven and a half hours? I don't know. But today, we're, gonna, we're not going to talk about guilt. I'm not going to ask you to empty your wallet out. I, you, you may think about later, maybe next year I'll do something different. But not today. Today's the day to celebrate. To celebrate what God has done, to rejoice in where you're at. It's like at the beginning of the race yesterday, they said, well, the training is over. Whatever it is, it is. <laughs> and that's kind of how it is today. If you're not ready now, the next 50, 20 minutes is not going to get you ready, but you can be ready later. We're still going to be taking it up over the summer or whatever. If you missed out or you want to do more, I know I want to do a little bit more uh, myself, but... Today is a day to celebrate what God has done. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day to give to you. We thank you for this day of grace, God, that we can celebrate not what we're doing for you, but what you've done for us. God, I pray that in the next while that you'll open up our hearts to your word. Help us to be inspired by Jesus and the life that he lived to make a true difference in the world. God, we love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Giving has to start with God. Giving is not about us giving. It's about God giving. From the very beginning, it was about God deciding, I want to give. I want to give to the world my most precious possession. And we know the scripture that God so loved you and me that he wanted to give his one and only son. That those who believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I put that in there for my wife, that picture there. That really wasn't my picture of love, but I, that, it's a little soft. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a little soft. But God is tough and God is tender. That he's there to get us going, but he's also there to pick us up when no one else is there. That he knows all of our darkest things. He knows our desires. He knows all of our disappointments. You know, I was talking with somebody this week, and they said, you know, I feel so alone. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? We're all alone. Most of our time is spent alone. But God is always with us. He knows every thought, even though your best friend may not care about your thoughts and they may get tired of listening to all of your stuff, God loves you. He knows where you're at. He forgives you. He's, he's there so that we're never alone, so that we're always in his love. And where we get the title from today is in 2 Corinthians 8. It says, but since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. And there's that word grace again, that charis that we've been looking at, the unending, undeserved, unfathomable love of God. His blessings, his kindness, his favor, his heart that just wants to give to you, that wants to be with you. Excelling in giving is not a competition. It's not a race. It's not a test. It's not where you have to get a perfect score. That's not what Christianity is about, a perfect score. 
And yet some of us, we try to excel. We try to do, win the prize. We need to win the prize to get to heaven. You know, the, the, the term great, uh, excelling is this term paris, parisio. Jake's been here for so long, I've got to throw a few <laughs> Greek words around every once in a while. Parisio. And I love the meaning. It means superabundance and overflowing. When you overflow your goal, kind of like the Macedonians here, what he's talking about is them giving way more than they even had to be able to encourage the church. It, it was the same word that after Jesus fed the 4,000 and the 5,000, it said that it, it overflowed. They had left over. They picked up so much that was left over that they had meals to come. See, grace, my translation is an overflow from inside that flows outside. That we get grace from God that just overflows and comes out on those around us in the world. That's what it means to excel in the grace of giving. So in order to give, you got to get you got to seek. you got to go after God. you got to meditate. And when you do, you have something to give, a gratitude, a generosity, a faith, and a trust in God. We're going to look at three verses today that, are, that define a life of giving. I'm sure there's many other verses that you could also pick, but three verses that define a life of giving. The first one is in Luke 6, 38. It says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And the context of this is Jesus talking about prejudice, where people were prejudging other people negatively, and forgiveness. Where he says, if you give forgiveness, it will be given back to you. Pressed down, shaken, together, running over. That God will give us way more than we give. So many times we are limited in our life because we fail to forgive people around us. We hold on to whatever they did. It might be a month ago, it might be six months ago, it might be six years ago. And we're holding on to it. And you say, well, that never happens in the church. <laughs> in Jesus' time, it happened more in the church than out of the church. And sometimes it can happen more in the church than out of the church. When people come back, we can tend to think, and if we're not careful, we can go to all the worst things they've done. And maybe that person hurt you five years ago. Maybe they did something that hurt your feelings. And yet, if we choose to give forgiveness, give the benefit of the doubt, give hope, wherever that, maybe they were in a bad spot, but they can change. When people came to Jesus, they never felt afraid of what he was going to say to them. The people that really were humble and had the worst sins, they came to Jesus and felt accepted. Do you think they felt that in the temple? No. But they felt that with Jesus. My question to you is when people are in sin and are not doing well, do they feel comfortable around you? Or do they feel judged? Or do they feel condemned? Or do they feel you have a list of all the wrongs that they've done? I'm not just throwing this around out of thin air. This happened in the last couple months in the church. Here. And I've done it before too. And if you're honest, so have you. That our reaction doesn't go first to forgiveness a lot of times when we're not connected to God, when we're not connected to the, all the forgiveness that we deserve, when we're not connected that we killed Christ, that's worse than anything that anybody can do to us. 
And we're not connected to what Paul said, I am the worst of sinners because of who I am without Christ. But today I'm calling us to make a decision and remake a decision that I'm going to be a giver. I'm going to give forgiveness. I'm going to give love. I'm going to give help. Maybe you're a, a student. You can help at school. You can help at home. I got to throw this out here because I want to make it public, but I was talking to my daughter on the phone yesterday. She said, I'm coming home for the summer, and I want to be different than I was in high school. I want to help around the house. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I said, can you wait a second? I wasn't recording. Let me get my phone up to the, let me record this. But how awesome is it when everybody's walking around thinking, who can I help? Who can I serve? What can I do? Let me, wh there's, where's the mess? Let me clean it up. Where's the dishes? I want to do them. I'm not going to just let that one roommate that does the dishes, I'm going to do it myself. What a world. That's what Jesus is saying. When you do that, when you live like that, grace will run over in your life more than you can imagine. I don't have the time to tell you the whole story, but we were going to the narrow door on Saturday morning, and I realized why I don't do that more often. We got home from the teen thing at like 10 o'clock. We celebrated the seniors graduating seniors. That was awesome. We celebrated the eighth graders coming into the teens, and we got home. It was a long week. The alarm went off at 6. And we had to be there at 8, and I was just thinking, oh my goodness, I know why I don't do this. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to complain just a little bit. Okay? Then we, we got in the car, we hustled to get down there, we got there at 8, and we didn't have to be there until 9. Okay, here we are. But it was an amazing time. And I was just thinking, that's why I don't serve the poor. Because I'm tired. Because it's effort. Because it's hard. You know, denying self is always a part of giving. The times when you don't want to do it, it's always a part of giving. We have that choice. When we're tired and we're out of energy, you go, well, I really don't want to do this, so will I do it or won't I? And it's in those little moments that we choose what kind of life we're going to live. We choose who we're going to follow. And I'm not saying you don't need to take care of yourself and just run yourself into the ground and get sick. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you live a life where you do the hard things because it's the right thing, you always feel better. You always feel encouraged. We were so excited. We talked to the, the manager there. He was telling us. And I'm just starting to get into a good place, serving, and we're doing the boxes, Jeff and I, and there was this overachieving lady that kept coming over and making sure we were going fast enough, and it was pretty interesting, wasn't it, Jeff? I mean, we're there, we're working hard, and she comes over, and she's like, you guys aren't working hard enough, and we're all getting an attitude, like, what are you doing? We're working hard over here. That doesn't have anything to do with the story. But we are being persecuted for working. <laughs> so the warehouse manager says, yeah, we have this neighborhood that needs, he found out we're from a church, we have this neighborhood that needs 20 to 60 boxes delivered every month for the next year. And I was just thinking, man, I was doing so good. I was happy, I'm feeling my, building my boxes with Jeff here, we're having a good talk, and now more. And so I want to put that before us. Hey, the guy asked, well, will our church take that on? Not just, not me, you, us, okay? That's, that's an us thing. It's not that bad, but it's a commitment, and you, you get to go, you get to serve, you can pray with people, you can encourage them, you can do whatever you want. Study the Bible, whatever you want to do. Uh, but I just felt like, man, this is a great organization, what a great opportunity for a church that wants to give. So I'll throw that out to you uh, to approach me and see if we're going to do that. Okay? 
But I felt like, man, God is really leading us here. And we left, we were so encouraged. I forgot about my attitude in the morning. And See, we start out and we, we just give a little bit. We're just eking out a couple drops. And then finally we get to have a good heart and we start opening up our heart. We're forgiving, we're, we're giving, it starts flowing out. And then God responds with his grace and he just overflows us. Right? We're just trying to get out a couple drops. We finally get to a good place and God just opens up the gates. Do you believe that? Do you believe that when you give, that God is going to give even more? Sometimes we look at Christianity all wrong, like it's such a hard thing. No, it's hard not to be a Christian. It's hard to go through life without Christ. It's hard to do life on your own. God's like, man, I'm going to bless you so much, but you're holding on so tight that you won't let me. That's a promise. When you decide, I'm going to give my life to Christ, he's going to overwhelm you with his grace. And he's done it over and over and over again. God's, we take a little step and God takes a big step. Second scripture, Acts 20, 35. Kind of similar, but a little different. In everything I did... I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That Paul's meeting with the Ephesian elders and he's committing them to the word of grace and he remembers the words of Jesus, it is more blessed to give than receive. And the first thing that struck me was that Jesus didn't have any money of his own when he was in his ministry. So he's not talking about giving money. He's talking about giving his life to help others. And Paul's talking specifically about helping the weak and and meeting people's needs and talking to them and encouraging them and praying with them and sharing scriptures with them. And point number two is more joy comes from giving than receiving. It's more blessed to give than to receive. How many people believe this? I believe this. Absolutely. But in my heart, I think, you know, but I really would rather receive. I mean, I know it's really good to give, but really, I'd rather receive. That we have this conflict going on. I was listening to this lesson, and the guy was talking about giving. He said, you know, I get so fired up, and I know that there's nothing better I could do with my money. It's just going to change the world, and I'm going to just give everything. And then in my mind, I'm like, what are you doing? (laughs) Then you start thinking about, well, what could I do with that money somewhere else? And how could that be used to relieve pressure over here? And how could I have fun with that? And so our heart says, go for it. And our head's like, I don't know. You have that going on? I do. I have that going on with this scripture. Because it doesn't always feel better to give than receive. But Jesus always thought it was better to give than receive. I thought of the wedding banquet parable. Where he gets it all ready, prepares all the food, makes it look beautiful, and invites us, and all we got to do is show up and put the robe on. But he's more happy to do that for us than we are receiving the gift. He's more happy to forgive us than we are even receiving the forgiveness. He's more happy to have us come to heaven than we are even to go. And I thought of Darren and Esther's birthday party where he pretty much, him and his wife, did everything for the party. All we did was show up. And the thing that just keeps going through my mind is he just said it over and over. I, get, I just love being around people that I love and that love me. And that's what makes it special. That's why Jesus calls it a wedding banquet. People that you love and people that love you. That that's what it means to be in the kingdom of God. And I thought about just if you're a parent, you, you know this. Right? You know this. Who's more encouraged? 
Probably not the baby. The parents are pretty excited. This gift that God's given them. You know, God is way more excited to encourage us than we even are when we receive it. That's his heart for each of us. That he gets joy out of helping. You know, today we, are, we get more joy than the people in the Middle East, based on this scripture. That we get a chance to give, and, and therefore we're more blessed. That it's better to be where we are. And there's, they we're going to have a video later that they're going to thank us and everything, which is really cool. But I was listening to this other sermon this week, and it talked about the joy of faith, and then the joy of dying. You may have listened to it. I sent it out. Uh, I got it from Jake. The joy of dying to bring others to faith. And he went through Philippians 1 and how amazing it is when you give your life to help someone come to faith, when you give everything, because you're being like Christ. And I, he's talking, and I'm just squirming the whole time, like, oh, man, that's, that's rough. That's challenging. And then he took it, and I thought of our brothers and sisters in the Middle East. That's what they are doing. And when they, came, they come over and they talk and said, yeah, people are dying over here and they're dying over there. And, and to them, that's life. They're willing, they're willing to die for their faith. I had to ask myself, am I? Am I willing to die for my faith now? When I was in my 20s, man, I would, I'll, no problem. I was fired up. I'll run through a wall. I'll get shot. But it's a little different now. And then the next part, it says, joy, the joy of others dying for their faith to help others. So not just me dying for them to have their faith, but then them dying so that other people can come to faith. Is that a joy for us? Because... Christians are going to die in the Middle East again. We've already had the sister that was studying the Bible get burned alive. We've had a brother in Egypt get his head cut off. We've had a father and son escaping Sudan die going across the Mediterranean. And that's probably not even everyone. And I start thinking about those stories and it's pretty heavy but not to them. That's a joy. It's a joy for them to be considered a martyr for the faith. Can you imagine going over there and the, the wife telling you the story and you go, man, that, I feel so sorry for, for you and for him. She'd probably look at us like, he's a hero. Why are you feeling sorry for him? She might be feel sorry for herself because it it's, puts her in a bad spot. But he's a martyr, man. That, that, that's going to help her get to heaven. I don't want to take that joy away from that brother or that sister who gave their life. I don't want to uh, retreat from that. I don't want to apologize for that. I don't want to feel sorry for him. It hurts me, but I want to rejoice. And when we hear news like that, I want us to celebrate. Say, yes, just like Jesus, just like Paul, just like Peter. They gave everything, and they didn't apologize for it. They didn't want someone to feel sorry because they were like Jesus. Man, that was challenging. But that's the spirit that they want from us. They don't want us to feel sorry for them. If we went over there and you started feeling sorry for them, they would be embarrassed for us. Wow, what are they doing? They would want us to rejoice with them. Hey, man, we're with you. We have our own challenges over here, and I'm not saying that we should feel guilty because we don't have to die for our faith. But let's not take that joy away from them either. It said that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And in Hebrews 12, it says, For the joy set before him, 
he endured the cross. That he died for the faith, he was happy to die for us. Because he knew what that would produce. He knew that as he laid down his life, that it would bear many seeds, including us. And I pray that as we decide to live a life of giving, that we don't feel sorry for ourselves. That we rejoice that we get to follow in the steps of Christ. That we don't feel like it's so hard and it's so challenging and, oh man, I got to get up early and, oh, I got to, whatever. Man, I get to be like Christ. I'll do it again. And I'll do it again. And I pray that as a Christian that you celebrate that. And I know that so many of you have given your lives, at least half of it, to, to Christ. Right now, we're going to take up our uh, missions contribution. I think our kids may be coming in here pretty soon. But they're going to lead the way for us. And if you're wondering, you know, just, just give one time for your weekly and your missions in case you're wondering about that. Somebody asked me. Uh, we're, we're giving to, for the missions here in the, in the Inland Empire as well as 22 churches and 700 disciples in the Middle East. And uh, we're going to start with the kids here. And also, don't forget your note of encouragement, and then we need to get somebody to uh, type these notes up if you are so inspired, if you have the gift of administration and would like to do that, please find me afterwards. And then uh, we're going to give down the middle and then go down the sides when we're done, uh, once the kids go first. Worship team. All right, so what we're going to have is we're going to have a couple of ushers up here at the front with some baskets. You're going to get dismissed row by row after the kids give, and you can head off to the sides and get back to your seats. But what we're going to do as we're giving those, we're going to sing some songs, because this is a celebration. If we're going to experience the joy of giving, then we should have some joy as we're giving to God. Amen? And again, if you gave online, just feel free to give your, your slip there, because we're going to type that up and send that out to the brothers and sisters in the Middle East. Your love has saved us. Lord, your love has saved us. Precious blood has bathed us. Precious blood has bathed us. Now your message takes us. Message takes We're going us. all around the world. All around the world. Can't you hear them? Hear them singing. The people there rejoicing with one voice. They are shouting. Singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want to dance as you come on down the aisle, feel free to do that. We're going to have some fun with this, all right? Everybody stand up. Into all creation. Into all creation. To each and every nation. We're sending you a salvation. salvation. Going all around the world. Come on, church. Can't you hear them? Hear them singing. The people there rejoicing with one voice. They all shout. We're singing hallelujah. 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 Demons fighting, your Holy Spirit guiding, Holy Spirit guiding, and family.
Family, we're uniting. Soul by soul. 
Have a seat. I'm out of breath. Well, guys, it has been a fantastic uh, service being together here. Thank you so much for everybody that gave and just your hearts to come up and be a part of this. Uh, I want us to even just think about how God wants to use this and multiply this. As as uh, even as um, as Scott was sharing, I kept having the the the. The scripture where Jesus turned, uh, broke the bread and the fish to feed the people. Like, Jesus used just a little bit to feed more than could ever even understand or express. So the money that we gave today, even though it was a sacrifice and all the stuff that we gave, God can do so much more with it than we could ever understand. And that's something to be faithful about, to continue to be praying for our brothers and sisters in the Middle East. I actually wanted to show real quick here. They sent us a little thank you video. I wanted to show it real fast before we wrap up. This region, uh, we want to take this opportunity, me and Jesse, uh, to really thank you so much for your sacrificial love, uh, for your giving, uh, for just your prayers and all these years of support uh, from the LA churches, from San Diego church. Uh, thank you. Thank you for all what you're doing. We just want you to know that all your sacrifice and, pray and prayers is saving souls out here in the Middle East region, the most challenging region, as we believe. We love you, and uh, we're looking forward to see you uh, uh, in the Middle East Conference coming this summer. No words can express our gratitude for your sacrifice and love, and the more important things, I, I believe, is your prayer for us. We love you. We love you. From the Church of Christ in Cairo, we say... Thank you. We love you. I have a couple of short announcements, and we're going to close with a word of prayer to end out the rest of the day here. Uh, this Wednesday, we're going to be having midweek all together. We're actually going to be having a, a worship midweek as well as a celebration for special missions. As well, if you were not able to give today, that's fine. If you want to continue to give over the next several weeks, uh, you can continue to do that. Uh, and as well, the last but not least, parents, if you have kids that are going to teen camp or youth camp, you want to make sure to, to get your camp registration in ASAP because the price is going up like next week. So... Uh, please do that. We're going to say a word of prayer here, and then we're going we're gonna to dismiss for the rest of the day. Oh, and uh, family group leaders, we have our meeting uh, in the fellowship hall uh, right after service finishes. God, we just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to participate in the grace of giving. Uh, God, thank you so much that you set us the example by giving to us first and foremost, by sending Jesus in, uh, to this world to die for our sins. And I pray, God, that we follow that example, that we continue to be a part of uh, of what he gave his life to do, and that we give of ourselves as well. God, that we give of ourselves uh, with, uh, with our finances to special missions and things like that, but we give of ourselves, more importantly, with our lives, with our hearts as we pour ourselves into, uh, into other people and helping them to know you. God, I pray that you, will, that you will take the money that we gave today far beyond what we could even understand, that you will, that you will use it to strengthen the churches in the Middle East, uh, that you will continue to help the gospel to be preached out there, but as well, God, you will use it here in the Inland Empire as, uh, as we continue to seek and save the lost uh, where we are here as well. We love you so much. We thank you. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. You're dismissed. <laughs> if you have any more of those response cards or prayer cards for the Middle East or wishes you want to give them, just give them to Fabian on the way out. You're dismissed, guys.